away and I get beside myself and next thing you know, I've done took up a lot of time just talking. But I love the Lord and I want to let everybody know that I'm not ashamed to stand up and profess Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. I'm not ashamed to let everybody know that I love to pray for the needs of people because I know my God is a God that meets the needs of his children. I know that God loves us because he sent his only begotten son for whosoever. That's you and me, friends. Be blessed as we listen into the testimony line right here, right now. Hello, God bless all. This is Brother Boyd London in Idaho. I love you all, and I'm praying for you. I was just calling in to say a, another prayer for the healing for all of us. Uh, God is a good God. He heals. Jesus heals. I thank him so much. We were able to have a healing conference here in Idaho, and I've read some books on healing, and what they talk about is just us needing to have faith and believe and know that we are healed without faith that it's impossible to please God, as Scripture says. And if we have faith as small as a mustard seed, we can say this mountain be moved, taken up, cast into the sea, and it will be done. We have to have faith and believe in our hearts and know that we are healed no matter what we're facing, and we will be healed. We can't ever back down from that. That's what all the healing ministers and people say. Never back down on your faith and believe and know that you are healed. Never back down. Father, I want to come to you in prayer in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for Jesus dying on the cross for our sins, for setting us free from our iniquities and sins and from our diseases. It says in Matthew 8, 17, that he took our infirmities and carried our diseases. It says in Isaiah 53, 4 through 5, that Jesus died on the cross for our sins and that we are healed of our sins and our sicknesses by the stripes, wounds, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. It says right here, Father, in Psalm 103, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with love, kindness, and tender mercies. There's another scripture in the Bible, Father, that says, You are the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and the faithless, and maintaining love to thousands, forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. And right here in this Psalm 103, it's saying that you forgive all of our iniquities, which you do, and you heal all of our diseases. And as we have turned our lives over to Jesus, and for those who are going to turn their lives over to Jesus, I am claiming that we are healed, as it says you heal all of our diseases. For the same power you use to make the stars, the earth, the moon, and the sky, please send your healing power through our bodies from the top of our head to the bottom of our feet and heal us. I claim that we are healed in the name of Jesus or whatever we need healing of. I've seen people healed. Father Kathy was healed of her colon cancer and bleeding, intestinal problems, the warm feeling flowed throughout her body from the top of her head to the bottom of her feet, and she was healed. It was all gone. They could find nothing wrong with her. I've seen so many people healed. I was healed of a serious back injury, and I just thank you now that we are healed. I praise you, glorify you, honor you, and magnify you. Psalm 34, and I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips, and I just thank you, Father, for healing us all. We will have faith and believe. We will never doubt, and I believe we'll know we are healed. Amen. I praise this prayer in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. As the devil's right hand Cause like a sailor Always looking for a fight Rumor was he stole the boy Truck at his eyes Scared the congregation One Sunday in May When he ran up to the altar And they heard Billy say Take me to the river Wash me clean Let my sins drift down to New Orleans Out into the middle Of the Gulf of Mexico Where they'll be forgotten And headed out the door Everybody followed all the way to the shore In the back of our minds While we stood there and prayed We were waiting for the 
the color of the water to change But it never did, it was as filthy as him He popped up out of the water and he said it again Take me to the river, wash me clean Let my sins drift down to New Orleans Out into the middle of the Gulf of Mexico Praise God. That's that's one of my favorites, the muddy Mississippi. Because, man, I'm telling you, <laughs> hey, man, that just, it touches me. I got to testify in just a moment because I know uh, some of you wondering, well, what's wrong with that evangelist? You know, he just loves to pray for people. He gets excited praying for people. Well, because over 30 years ago, they give me up to die, you see, when I lived in Whitesburg, Kentucky. And... Uh, they, uh, my feet drawed backwards. My kneecap was popping out of place. They took me to uh, Lexington, Kentucky at UK Medical Center. From there, they sent me to Louisville, Kentucky to some specialists, more specialists. And uh, they found an aneurysm in my, my brain, my head. And they said that it was about the size of a, a tennis ball and that uh, surgery would probably kill me. And it was going to burst and kill me anyway. And they had put about a three-month life expectancy uh, to my life. Of course, you know, my wife, my mother, they called them in. We in that little conference room and, and told them all these uh, statistics. And, uh, you know, the whole time, uh, well, I went through every emotion. I got angry at God. I got mad at myself. I was too young to be to be sick. Uh, I had to work. Uh, I had uh, a couple of kids at that time, and I thought I, I got to take care of them. I can't. I can't die. And uh, of course, I was sick in my my body at the time and weak. And uh, well, I went home and I started making preparation to die. I went in uh, uh, the day or two before I really got bed fast. I. I called the funeral homes, went and visited them, started trying to figure out how to make the payments to where I could help my family financially and they wouldn't have to uh, carry that burden that I could have most of that took care of. I had three months to get everything in order according to the doctor, and, and within that frame of time, I was going to meet death. So as I laid there on my couch and I began to feel sorry for myself and, uh, man, I was talking out of my head. It had pressure build up in there and things and fluid in the brain and all that. And, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was bad. Um, let me read this right here. Uh, and then I'll finish my testimony. Angela Cheney says, uh, my cousin's baby needs prayer. He is in the hospital in Kentucky. They think he has a, a bowel obstruction. He is one year old. Also, my uncle is going through a lot of surgeries and has some blockages. Right now, let's pray for this, this, this situation right now. Dear Heavenly Father, God, as, as Ann, Angela Cheney has, has 
cast our cares upon you. Lord, as we enter to the, the throne room of grace boldly, Lord, speaking such as we ought, we speak to this, this baby, this one-year-old baby right now, bow obstruction right now, clear up in Jesus' name. We Right now, the blood of Christ is applied to these bowels and every organ of this child right now as we stand and claim victory in the name of Jesus. Uh, Satan, we rebuke you. Sickness, obstruction, we rebuke you. We come against you. We cast you out. We bind you, and we cast you out in the name of Jesus. Uh, healing has to take place according to the word of God through and by the faith. Honey, I got the faith. You got the faith. Uh, there's nothing impossible with God. I believe. Do you believe? Say amen. I believe that baby right now now that bow obstruction is beginning to clear up. It's going to amaze the doctors. It's going to amaze the family, and we're going to continue to give God the praise, the glory, and the honor right now in this one-year-old child situation. Anne's cousin right now, Lord, we know that you know the baby, and you know where they're at. Lord, guide them doctors' minds and their hands, uh, Lord, to make the right decisions uh, for the rest of this stay at the hospital, Lord, or this treatment, because this bow obstruction is gone in Jesus' name, and they're going to spend some time looking but they ain't going to find. It's gone in Jesus' name. It's gone in Jesus' name. We stand on the word of God. This child, this child, this child is healed. According to thy faith, so be it. This child is healed in the name of Jesus. It's healed. It's settled. It's finished. He bore the stripes right now, right here, this day, this time. For the Lord's the same. He changes not. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. It is. Satan, we rebuke you. Doubt, we cast you out in the name of Jesus, our precious Lord and Savior, the only begotten Son of God. Doubt, you have no room in these family members' lives. We cast you out as we command them to speak victory and to speak the Word of God over this child continuously. Life in the name of Jesus. Bow obstruction is gone. Let's pray Praise God. Well, glory. Do a little shouting hallelujah in the room right now because they've been another miracle. Jesus is still in the miracle working business. Uh, he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He changes not. This baby, this baby, this baby, this cousin, this baby, this baby belongs to the faith of the believers. This baby, and for that uncle that's going through a lot of them surgeries right now, Lord, you know them blockages. We open up in the name of Jesus. Uh, amaze the doctors, the nurses the family, everybody around. Let that individual give you the glory as you reach down and not only restore their soul and their walk with God, but renewing their faith. Uh, with a measure of faith, a double portion is poured out upon this uncle and them blockages in the name of Jesus is opened up and blood flow is flowing normally, smoothly as the Lord adds years unto the, the, to the life of this uncle right now as we stand and proclaim it and we know the word of God says if we believe in our heart and doubt not that if any two touch any one thing that hit his soul if you say to that mountain be cast into the sea it'll obey I believe I stand upon the word I believe the word every word from Genesis to Revelation I speak life into this uncle I rebuke the devil I rebuke doubt I, re I rebuke the spirit of unbelief right now and his family members those to get away from him that do not believe uh, get out because there's a promise coming down that dusty road and his name is Jesus. Uh, this uncle's uh, I'm telling you ain't going to be the same. There's a fire being lit up in them mountains of Kentucky tonight uh, and it's starting to light up the area. God's going to take the downcast, the trodden, the sick, the afflicted, uh, the poor, the lonely, and he's going to raise them up. Do you hear me? In Jesus' name I proclaim the word of God as we speak the gospel over this uncle right now, right now in Jesus' name, the only begotten Son of God, our precious Lord and Savior. We claim victory. Amen. And amen as we pray. Amen. 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 God's good, church. God's good. God is good. Do you hear me? God is good. I said God is good. I said God is good. Let me tell you something. When he reached way down, the doctors done and gave up hope on me. I done and gave up hope on myself. Back in the day when they said I was going to die, we had preachers that come to the house and I was talking out of my head and listened to me. They was afraid of me. They wouldn't even pray for me. My children's feelings was hurt. Uh, my wife was discouraged. Uh, she thought the men of God would come in and pray, but they was afraid. Do you hear me? They didn't have the 
the goods. You remember what Peter and John said, golden or silver have I none, but such as I have I give unto thee. Do you hear me today, church? You got to be walking upright with God. You got to be absorbed in his word. You must be a doer of the word of God. You see, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give unto thee today over these airways, over this radio program, whether you're listening live or by way of the archive, the power of God is the power of God, and besides him, there is none other. He's right on time. Do you-